<laughs> there were B grounds and tabs that were uh, <laughs> if you were crook tooth. So let's go ahead and uh, get this started. So man, why don't you tell us where you're um where you're from and where are you at currently? So I'm originally from South Bay area, man. I was born in San Jose, um, lived in that area, like Santa Clara, San Jose, around there for a while. And then I moved to another city called Hollister a little bit further south. Still South Bay, kind of, kind of, it kind of shares, um, or rather South Bay and the Central Coast area both kind of claim it. So it's, you know, it's down, just kind of one of them cusp cities, man, or little towns, really. That's it. That's oh, oh, no, no. I, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got us nervous over here, Crook Two. Yeah. What you we're, do we're, to us? Hey, man, we're off to a good start. We're off to a good start. Hey, so <laughs> where, where are you currently at right now, man? Oh, my bad. Yeah. So, um, so now I live in uh, Southern Oregon. So, kind of um, the city I live in is called Medford. Um, I think it's the third or fourth biggest city in in oregon but it's still small i think it's got like 80 thou or something like that small town type of thing yeah man big departure from from you know bay area so what were some of your experiences man growing up um in that area especially with hip-hop and um like what kind of things were you getting into back in the day oh man when i was a kid so man it started early for me i was i was always into music my dad is a musician um hell of a guitar player he's he kind of um he kind of shared his gift with me that way where man, anything i could get my hands on any instrument i mean whatever we go into music stores and stuff and i would just hit up stuff that i didn't even know what it was and just you know start playing around with stuff and um hip-hop came in my life real early um you know all my homies were listening to it i was listening to it I mean, Man, well, you know, it was it was everything from the skater kids and Beastie Boys and all that kind of thing, um, you know, all the way up to like, you know, like I listened to a lot of Gangstar and stuff like that when I was younger, and then and then I kind of went back in time and started, you know, like trying to catch up on old, like you know, Rakim and, and even farther back to like, you know, the the origins of the of the music and stuff like that, and. Um, just never left, man. So, um, what got you into producing, and how long have you been producing hip hop? Oh man, so probably ninety three is when um, I bought all this this uh, you know, crappy garage type equipment from people, and I was recording stuff on a tape deck, man. And I had a I had a DJ mixer, and I would record it, play it back, and then whatever I would add would just come from another tape. And then both of them things would be on that tape. So it was, it was real bad, man, but, but it was fun. So I started rhyming first and, you know, there was kind of a shortage of everybody wanted to rhyme. There was a shortage of producers kind of back then for me anyway. And um, so I started making these, you know, these low budget beats and yeah, I mean, so I did all that and then I went to the Navy and everything, as you know. So it, it, it took a little bit of a backseat for a few years and then uh, came back to it. Um, minus the rhyming part, really just, just working on making beats and any kind of music I could really. Um, yeah. I mean, still going, man, still going. So what were some of your experiences in the Navy? Um, did you get to go overseas, any other countries, any other cultures? Yeah. Yeah, I went on two Westpacs. Um, I served in the Gulf, got that, I think it's the expeditionary and sea service and all that stuff. But I went, I've been to um, Australia, Guam, Fiji, Singapore, Hong Kong. It's just all over, man. Like, obviously, Hawaii, stuff like that. Um, Kenya was really cool. A uh, whole bunch of little places, but just about everywhere in the, in the Western Pacific that you could hit up, I think I'd probably hit up. Have any of those um, experiences overseas influenced your music currently as of today? Yeah, I think so, man. I mean, even, um, even on a smaller scale, just the cats that, that I was around in the Navy, um, you know, they're from all over the place. So you get all these different tastes, man. And I was um, from the West coast, but I really liked, east coast stuff like i really um 
I really dug like the beats and the production and, and everything. So I was kind of making like, you know, I wanted to be premiere from like, from like the beginning, you know what I mean? And so I was trying to make like these East coast beats. Um, and then when I got to the Navy, I started hanging out with dudes that were from the South. And this was like, this was back like, like master P and stuff like that. So I was exposed to those kind of things. Um, became a huge outcast fan late to the game for that one. But, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as, so as far as worldwide, um, I'd say it just kind of opened my eyes to some more stuff that I could try to get my hands on as far as instruments and, and, um, stuff that I could tinker around with and see what comes out of it. So you said you used to skateboard, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I did all that. For how long about? Um, shit. Since, I mean, probably since 12, 11, 12 years old, but you know, I, I don't, um, I don't skate nowadays, but I wouldn't mind having a deck to just mess around, and hurt myself on, but I, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but you know, on and off, you know, I, I think, um, so I skated when I was a kid, you know, like pre junior high and all that stuff. And then, um, I started boxing and it took up a lot of my time. And I think in high school, I picked up another deck and just, you know, kind of kind of farted around and did street stuff a little bit i was never that good though just i just had a lot of fun doing it and you know i, I kind of just came organically i guess so you used to box too yeah man silver gloves regionals um uh, golden gloves state um boxed in the navy and ended up it, it's i mean that's a, we can go off on a whole different tangent with that i ended up I ended up getting into submission wrestling and jujitsu hooked up with uh, Frank Shamrock and started training out of his place. At the time he was running a camp out of AKA in San Jose. And then he uh, opened up his own place, Shamrock submission Academy. Uh, big shout out to them. I used to train with uh, him and a couple of the other pros out there. And um, yeah, it turned into an MMA thing sort of before MMA got so popular. You know, I got into like Muay Thai started doing you know um brazilian jiu-jitsu wrestling just just all of it before you know this this was when um those things were a little bit separated still now like you know you go to a school and it's just an mma school you t you know you you go and train and you're just doing a little bit of everything but i got kind of the most it was like being in a classroom full of people as opposed to having like a tutor for each each specific discipline, if that makes sense. So I got, yeah. you know, I got boxing, just straight boxing, which I'd already had, you know, in the past. And then I got kickboxing, just straight kickboxing and then straight, you know, wrestling and straight jujitsu. I did all those things. And then, um, you know, now it's a little bit, you know, it's still great. These dudes are, these dudes are great. And, I, and like I said, I can go on for all, all day about this shit, but, um, yeah, it's a little bit muddled now. You know what I mean? Like going to an MMA class isn't the same as going to each one of those classes or, or training with each type of other fighter, you know, that that's like, all right, this dude's a Muay Thai champ. I want to go get my legs kicked out by him or this guy's a wrestler. I'm going to go get thrown around by him. You know what I mean? It's a little bit, a little bit more uh, style specific, I guess. You still, you still fighting? No, man, I stopped competing in 2010. Um, I won a, um, there's an organization out there called Grappler's Quest and they're big. It's, it's some of the best submission fighters that, that you'll see up and coming. And, um, so I won, I won gold in the blue belt or intermediate division, which would be like blue belt. And then, uh, the next year I lost and then went back to boxing and lost two straight, man. So I hung them up after that. As far as like MCing, you said um, earlier that you used to rhyme. Um, so how how often are are you are you working on that craft? Or, um, are you trying to get back into it? Um, have you done any uh, projects with anyone in the past? Yeah, MC yeah. So I used to have like I mean I was like kind of part of a crew back in the day. There were a whole bunch of kids that were rhyming and stuff like that. We did all the things that kids do, like sign up for high school talent shows and stuff. And I hooked up throughout all that hooked up with a dude named john jay he's still in the game he's he's dope man he's i mean props to him dude shout out to john jay he's he's uh he's got a radio show 
in Salinas. Uh, but he's a he's dope, man. He he made a couple albums with a band called Ether. It was kind of a metal rap type of thing, but he's hip hop to the core, man. This dude's legit. So me and him were rhyming. Um, did a couple shows on on the radio on uh, a radio station in Salinas, uh, KHTC, and um, started recording. But we were still recording using this shitty equipment that I had, you know. Like so, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, up to par stuff. It wasn't going on the radio or anything like that. And uh, yeah, man. So it just kind of, those kind of things, like the relationships kind of fizzled out in that game for me when I went to the Navy and came back. I mean, me and John Jay are family for life. So, you know, I still talk to him, all that good stuff. But um, yeah, I, you know, I kind of came back and just went to the workforce, man. Like, you know, it was just, take care, take care of yourself and do all that stuff. And I got lost in that. And, um, you know, just grinding every day. Like there was a time when I had three jobs, man, I was a firefighter an EMT and a commercial glazer, man, at the same time, it was rough. And so I didn't really prioritize music as much as I should have back then. You know, mind you through all this, I'm still training too. Like, so I'm showing up to work with black eyes and, you know, people are noticing like, Hey, are those, those new teeth? I'm like, yeah, man, I got some new ones. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> you know, so, you know, like I was just a busy dude, man. And, and music didn't really, um, I wasn't able to, to get that, you know, into my time, into my schedule as much as I would like to. And, and now I'm at a point in my life where I have been for the last few years, you know, it's been kind of revival. So, I'd say probably 2015 or 16, I got back in. I just bought an MPC and just went from there, used it off the laptop and, you know, um, use that Mixcraft program that I still use, the Mixcraft 7, and um, and was just making beats and and not really writing rhymes. But um, but some dude, some dude's sending me a mic right now, so um, – that's going to help out with that. I think uh, it's going to motivate me to start rhyming and, and you know, at, at least write stuff and put it out just, you know, just for the crew, for the collective. I mean, who knows, man, maybe, it, maybe it, it goes further from there. What you got? Yo, yo. 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 And that's, you know, that's kind of what made me start thinking when you was talking about the new teeth and the black eyes. Is that how you came up with Crook Tooth as your name? I mean, I'm not clowning, yeah, but I'm well, just asking. It, no, no. It, in a way, yeah, it is, man. So, so um, back in the day, it, so I used to write graffiti too. And um, back in the day, it was brass. So I used to I used to hit up BRS, and um, that's what I used to do. Like that's what I used to kind of go by, I guess, back in the day. Then it turned into six or seven different names over the years, mm-hmm. and uh, you know. And uh, when I came back, like so, let's just we'll call it 2015 the revival. Um, I'm like, you know, you know, let's let's start fresh. Let's not be juvenile. Um, Although crook tooth is kind of a juvenile name when you think about it, but um, so I got this crooked bottom tooth, man, and uh, it's one of the real, it's one of the only real ones left. So, <laughs> you never like stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to mute the mic, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's him. That's him. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, but no, I'm it's okay, man. So, so I mean, it's uh, it's um. One of the one of the only one of the last standing organic teeth left. So, so, <laughs> so that's what I went with, man. I'm like, all right, you know, and and I thought too, like I thought, all right, kind of has a cool ring to it. And I did a quick internet search. Was there anybody else out there with that name? Didn't find nothing, and just stuck it. You're funny, but that's that's dope, though. Um, and, you know, you got a cool story by, you know, how you come, you know, with that name. Do you have any pictures of that tooth, though, online? Oh, Anywhere? man, I'll send, you, I'll send you hella pictures, man. No, I don't have anything <laughs> online, but... Um, We're going to need to know, uh, sure, promo man. it for the, the interview. Yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. You got, if you look back at any of my pictures, like with my kid or anything, um, usually I'm smiling. 
If you zoom in, you'll find that crook tooth, man, for sure. You'll find it. <laughs> so that's the last of the Mohicans, huh? Yeah, I can yeah, dig it. I can dig it. Old strong. It's like, don't let go. Don't let go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're funny. Well, um, how would you describe your style as a producer? And if you could have like anyone, whether they're famous or not, spit to any one of your beats, who would it be and why? Oh, man. So my style is a little bit all over the place, but... Um, I really like, you know, I like jazz samples. Um, you know, I kind of, I kind of fall in with that, you know, like that, uh, I guess tribe kind of vibe in my own mind anyway. Um, but at the same time, I really like music or not, or movie rather like movie soundtracks and stuff like that. Cause there's always this dramatic overture that happens in those things. So you find like, you know, some sci-fi or some eighties movie or some horror movie, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I like, I like pulling pieces off of that and then build kind of building drama that way. But at the same time, I really like it. You know, I like that vibe of those, those jazz, you know, old jazz joints. Um, as far as rappers or MCs, um, man, you know, I, I, that's a tough one to pick, but I'm, I'm really blessed right now. Cause you know, I got Night Owl. I'm working, doing something with Night Owl. I got, I got something with you. I got, I got something with Grimes. That's going to be pretty cool whenever that happens. Um, For sure. Uh, and and I got something with Kumo. And um, the chemistry with with Kumo, man, big big shot to Kumo. It's it's working, man. I mean, the chemistry with everybody's great. Everybody inside hip, you know, everybody inside hip hop prodigies. I feel like I could work with easily um but the what's going on right now with like cumo and stuff is kind of making me reconsider like that question i guess if i had to choose um i would say i'm happy right where i'm at with cumo and night owl and everything um everybody's you know it's it, it, it's intimidating to try to solicit an mc sometimes and these guys made it feel like you know i was right at home so you know all that yeah, man, all the fame and all the, you know, I could say like, oh, Jay-Z or something like that. But, you know, I'm happy where I'm at with these guys, man. That's what's up. That's what it's about, too, you know, building like real organic type relationships. And, you know, once you do connect with artists that you work good with and, you know, just continue, you know, to, to make things happen and make magic because that's what it's all about. You yeah, know, definitely. definitely. You can't take well, the fun out of it. Yeah, for real. Yeah, definitely. And then you guys get to learn each other too. And then you start yeah. knowing their style. They know your style. So, you know, that's yeah. what's up, you know, yeah. always about learning and building. So I can dig that. Yeah. You know? Well, how yeah, can that's... people, um, how can people follow you on social media or check out some of your beats? So man, all right. Um, this, what I've been doing recently with, with the crew and everything is the most I've ever put myself out ever um i'm pretty i'm i'm kind of reclusive with just random cats i don't know so i don't have much but i have an ig um you know it's it's gonna be the crook tooth on instagram excuse me but i don't have a facebook um i don't have a twitter i don't even know how to use that stuff to be honest like i'm a little bit i'm i'm, I'm kind of a, i'm kind of family style these days you know what i mean like i'm not very right not really that big on mingling with cats. I don't know, but I mean, everybody's welcome to follow me. It's cool. Like, that's great. But, uh, yeah, that's just, that's just me. I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty humble dude. I can dig it. I can dig it. And, and the listeners out there, you guys can always, you know, follow hip hop prodigies and go to hip hop prodigies.com yeah. and check out some of his work as well. And some of the collaborations, um, that he spoke on some that are out and some that are definitely in the works and those that come. So, you know, they can definitely check that out. Um, so you said you live in, um, Oregon right now, but you're from, yeah. um, the Bay area. How long have you been in Oregon? Uh, I think we're going on, eight years now close to eight okay. years yeah okay that's what's up i i used to go to portland quite frequently like you know at least 
three, four times a year. You know, I yes. used to have events out there and stuff like that. But obviously, um, I haven't done anything this year. 2019 was my last year really going out there. But I'm definitely planning on, you know, coming back out there. I'm kind of like, you know, part of the cannabis community and stuff, too. So oh, they man, have like this. Yeah. <laughs> you love it down here, man. That's why I be coming down there. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Northwest Cannabis Club, but shout out to the Northwest Cannabis yeah. Club and uh, Mike over there, you know, but we have uh, many events down there and that's a cool little spot where, you know, you can go in there and do your thing and then listen to some good music, you know, yeah. perform, you know, things like that. Have you ever been in there or heard of it? No, I've heard of it, but I haven't been in there. I've seen, um, I think they're on IG, aren't they? Because I think I've seen some of their yeah. stuff on IG. Um, yeah, yeah. I haven't been in there, but I know you're from Seattle. I used to go up there a lot, man. I, when I was in the Navy, I was stationed in Everett, so okay. down there quite a bit. Yeah. If you ever come down, man, you're always welcome to stay at the house, man. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. How far is Medford um, from Portland? It's it's about three hours, so or maybe even a little bit more. You know, Portland's on the north tip, and Medford's like like twenty okay. twenty miles from California or something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, no doubt. We definitely going to connect, you know, it's a small yeah. world, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But, you know, yeah. definitely, you know, do some things. So, well, how are you holding up over there, you know, during this um, COVID-19 pandemic and how are you making use of your time lately? Are you working at all? Yeah, man, I'm actually, I'm actually working right now, but um, I work at a hospital. I'm a mechanical engineer at a hospital. So um, yeah, I'm, I guess, quote unquote essential i haven't been laid off or anything my wife has mm -hmm. and um, that's been kind of rough you know i mean we're doing fine financially but it's been rough because she's you know she's just home and we got a five-year-old and he's probably driving her crazy as we speak and stuff but um she's a phenomenal artist she's a painter and it gives her some time to to get in the studio and you know put out some some more artwork of her own so this whole thing, you know, we're turning it into a positive, like, like I'm seeing right. most people, you know, I'm seeing most people doing that, which, you know, maybe is the message with this whole thing, you know, is, you know, turn it into a positive work on your craft and, and um, make the best out of it. Don't mope, don't go fucking looting places or nothing. Just, right. just do you be, be a better you when this whole thing comes out. And on the other end, you know, you have something to show for it. Exactly. Then you come out better than um, what you came in with, you know, because yeah. whatever is going to happen is going to happen anyway. So there's there's no reason yeah. to panic. Live your life. Be yeah. happy. But, you know, if you're an artist, you know, like you're saying, you know, or whatever you're doing, whatever you like to do with your life. Now is the time whether you want to lose weight, eat healthy, you know, do whatever you need to do. Get yourself together. You know, um, now is the time to do that. And you got to try to make use of that time and definitely turn it into a positive. Because if you stay listening to this, you know, news all the time and other people, you know, it will kind of drive you crazy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at stuff, you know, uh, earlier today. I think it was from last night. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. um, liberate such and such state or whatever. It's like, nah, that's not – don't don't start a riot, man. Just, right. just do your thing. And, you know, you got no reason not to be better on the other end of this. I really? get the financial thing. But, man, I think I think a lot of people, when when given enough free time, are going to find the negative side of anything, man. I mean, right. it's, it's crazy. It's, it's like, it's divided, man. Hopefully it's, it's, you know, a higher percentage on our side of the people that are trying to create and trying to be a better human being. Um, right. But there's that other percentage that just wants to, they, they want to wallow in it and they want to be pissed off and they want to, you know, um, go storm the, the everything, whatever, storm exactly. the world. Exactly. You know, what I mean? just, <laughs> just chill, man. Just chill. Exactly. Good things, good things are coming. Better things are coming, man. And you know, to take a to take a quote from one of my old boxing coaches, man. Big shout out to Zeke Lopez at Bulldog Boxing. The only way to the only way to look when you're laying on your back is up. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's yeah. real talk, though. But yeah. you know, those kind of people. Are 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 the probably most of them are probably the type of people that are never happy anyway. So no matter yeah. what situation yeah, they're true. in, they're yeah. always gonna find something to try to you know bring things down. And 
You know, they're yeah. energy vampires. And, you know, when yeah. they're around people that are more positive and people like us that try to make better over our time, they want us to be on their side. So they try to convince you of all the bad reasons why you shouldn't feel the way that you do. No, yeah. we're not going to sit up here and looking like you moping and crying. Yeah. I'm going to make use of my time because if I go tomorrow, I at least want to be happy what I did before I go. Yeah. You know what that's, I mean? So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's what that's that's what makes you better every day, man. And I think what's going on too is I think that if, um, if you equate your finances with your success, then you're definitely going to be pissed off all the time. Exactly. Never, I'll never have enough money. Oh, I'll never have uh, enough to go on this vacation or to get this ride or to get this house or whatever. Fuck right. that shit. Can I say fuck that shit on this interview? Fuck that shit. Um, this is a, yeah. a children-friendly <laughs> station. <laughs> <I'll play here>. <laughs> <laughs> a family-friendly, whatever. The but all, you know, um, here, here, um, heck with all that mess. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I'll put it on YouTube. I'll make sure I check that it's not for children. So we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. But, but really, man, I mean, that stuff's garbage. If, you're, if you look at it, like, that's, that's how I can equate my success. Is right. just by, you know, by how much I'm making this year or, um, you know, what I got materialistically, then, right. I mean, you, you're never going to be happy because there's always going to be something else that's going to get out there. There's going to be a commercial for the 2021 car that you got the 2020 car and you're exactly. going to walk out you're, So you're sad about that. You know, like, I don't care about that shit, man. Right. At all. Because whatever you get is going to be a blessing. And this just confirmation for you saying that, because I was talking to a coworker uh, probably about two or three hours ago, similar mm-hmm. stuff, telling her the yeah. same thing, you know, about how, you know, money and materialistic things, those type of people that are stuck on that will never truly fully ever be happy because there's wow. always going to be something that they want or somebody has a better car or more money than them. So they always got to upstage them and they're yeah. looking, you know, definitely in the wrong things. And honestly, when you look at the world and what's going on, you know, right now, I mean, the bigger picture is all of this probably has things to do with money if you want to keep it 100, but that's 100%. a whole different conversation. <laughs> that's a whole conversation, yeah. different conversation. It's, you know what I'm saying? So, you it's know, man, about money. So when, you know, when you got, well, you know, I don't, I don't put anybody out there, but when you have certain people saying things like um, the loss of life is lesser of two evils than a, a economic crisis. Man, right. you, you're loyal to the wrong thing, man. Facts. Facts. Well, as I, long I, as we know, we going to be on a higher vibration because we can talk yeah, about that stuff. Man. You know all what I'm day. saying? All, all, all day. day. Hey, all we, day. We have, and um, we got receipts. We got receipts, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For real. So, you know, I just found out before doing this interview um, that Teddy Riley in Babyface is about to go at it tonight. You about to watch Ma'am. that? Yeah. I'm, don't say it under my boss, but I'm going to watch it right here at work. I know that's right. So who you who are you going for? Who you got? Uh, I'm, I think Teddy. Yeah, Honestly, me too. You know. What about you, B? Uh, Babyface. Really? What? Man? So, hey. Okay, what? I ain't mad at you. Once he plays jump, it's over, man. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be dope. I'm riding with T- Teddy, too, but you never know. Because with RZA and Premier, everybody was man. thinking Premier, and yeah. RZA took it. I was go. riding with RZA from the beginning, and yeah, I might be a little biased because I love Wu-Tang, but I fucked yeah. with Premier, too. Sorry, kids, but no, it's all- I fucked with him, too. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I didn't. I wasn't one of those people that thought like he was going to mop the floor with Rizzo or anything. But I did think that it was going to be um, decisive. But right. They, they showed up and they showed up and they um they duped it out and it was it was good, man. Like hip hop won that night, you know. Definitely. I I lo- I wish you know I got to look on YouTube to see if somebody got that on um tape or something. I'm sure somebody did, but it's um, on um, yeah. it's on Machine Masters on their YouTube channel. They have it. Oh, they do. Oh, word! I'll, I'll drop up. the link. I'll drop the link in the Telegram. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, um, let's get to the the question of the night. What's why up? did you Why did you join Hip Hop Prodigies, and why do you continue to support the movement? 
Man, so, okay, so I joined, um, I want to say I started following Archadelic, and um, I started seeing some of the promos or some of the, the uh, tags and stuff, and I thought, man, I want to see what this is all about. So, so I could be wrong, man, it's been a minute, but I'm pretty sure I messaged Archadelic, and then he might have gotten at, at you, Grimes, I'm not sure, or he might have sent me something himself. But anyway, I filled out the app, and man, I was more nervous than I was than I am right now for this interview. And um, <laughs> it it worked out, you know, obviously. And and now that I'm, you know, now that I'm in it, there 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 ain't no leaving for me, man. This I'm in love with this thing. Like what what you guys are doing, what we're all doing in this thing is it, it's um we need more of that. It's it's a it's magic to me. You know, I mean, we got guys that all right. So I want to um. I want to work with somebody and then fucking some dude from India pops up. It's like, I'm going to, all right, let's do something. You know what I mean? It's not like right. you got to go, go looking through your catalog of the small, the small catalog of the friends you have. Now it's just, man, Hey, who wants to get on this beat? And then you got, you know, people popping in and doing work with you and, and vice versa. You know, you see something out like the beat catalog or something like that. You get an opportunity to pop on it and it's, you know, it's like, oh, damn, I never, you know, I never knew I even could do that. Or I didn't know that um, that it, this would turn out so well. And it's just, like I said, man, it's just been magic since since I got into this thing. Definitely. It's like a, we're a collective, but it's also like we're a, an extended family, you know, yeah. as far as the, the vibe and everything. So I can definitely dig that. Um, yeah. Well, do you have like um, any last words or shout outs or anything you want to touch bases on that we haven't already? Um, no, I just want to I want to thank you guys, man, for um, for letting me in <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and just props to everybody that's that's out there. Every every member, you know, that I'm seeing, like, you know, when 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 we're all talking and stuff every day, all these members, we got dudes that are and women we got people that are just working very hard to better themselves so i just want to you know say keep up with that keep going um if anybody's interested in artwork i gotta pr i gotta plug my wife man check out uh aaron Pereira art on ig um you know i think uh as far as as far as uh shout outs man it's more of a go follow hip-hop prodigies and find out for yourself you know, I could sit here and talk about each member and how dope they are and how hardworking they are, but you need to get on and you need to follow for yourself and you need to see the, the magic that's coming out of this thing. Yeah, for sure. And um, we already have your um, Instagram info. B, do you have his wife's page as well? Yeah, um, yeah, I'll get it from him. I even got your, uh, you know, your, your um, instrumental album. I got it on the website too, so I'll make sure we link it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally yeah. That. yeah that's on uh Bandcamp, right yeah yeah so i got i got yeah. all the links so yeah we'll put them in the the youtube video um just want to say um hey thanks for interviewing uh thanks for yeah. becoming a member thank you guys you thought that um you had nothing to say you actually had a you actually had a really interesting um <laughs> very interesting yeah. interview man you know? it's a bunch it's a bunch of rambling man yeah all thank right you man yeah, yeah we have thank you three minutes thank left you. so um yeah we'll put this up we got a few more interviews before you but it should be up within a month if i'm as long as i could keep up no hurry you. man no yeah. hurry <laughs> all right cool cool all right everyone see you guys on the telegram and uh, thanks again all right guys, all right you guys peace all right, and love you. all right